And for that girl backstage, they make it publicly clear. Never mind who you thought I was. I'm Rick James, bitch. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. So I woke up this morning uh, with a very disturbing message on my phone from, um, it seems as though one of my baby daddies has a little problem. Oh, hi, Wolfie. I'm, are you going, <laughs> are you going with them? No, I'm going with them. Okay. I love you. Um, so I woke up this morning to some disheartening messages from one of my baby daddies. Now, those of you that know me, many of you here have known me for 176 years. Um, I'm a single mom of five kids and I have three baby daddies. Three. So one of them, Muscle Women's. <laughs> is seeming to be a little bit upset because my oldest daughter who's 23 about to be 24 a whole ass adult posted a message to me that said happy father's day and i reposted that and he was i guess upset i don't really know he posted a, a message a cryptic message that said you know something about um don't ask the dads why they're not with the, their kids. Ask the moms why they, you know, why they couldn't be there, why they weren't allowed. So I took that as a, you know, a situation because many, many people sent that to me. And I've noticed that he sends other messages too that are like, you know, talking about brainwashing and stuff and of kids and all of this. I would just like to say, and I hate to do all this, but, you know, when you come for me, like, ding dong i'm there up out of my bed i'm here to give it all of it to you that you wanted sir so i would just like to say my two girls and ayoki lee feels the same way even whether she posted it or not uh, my two girls just recently graduated from college um yoki graduated from harvard university she's one of the youngest uh people students certainly young women women of color to graduate from there at 20 at such a young age in probably most of recent history we can go back together and see exactly when that you know when that when that is when that was but she's one of them P um some people who were noticeably absent was their dad um and uh mr simmons and so I noticed then, as soon as we started posting our graduation pictures and all these things, he starts to post on his um, Instagram. People send it to me because he's blocked by all my children and myself. He's blocked. We don't engage with him. We don't talk to him. We haven't spoken to him in many months, many, many, many months, probably going on years. Um, but I noticed that he started to cryptically post... Um, children of divorced parents are oftentimes brainwashed. And I thought, wow, you, and people really, you know, probably start to believe that in the world, social media, I don't know. People take sides, we all know that. People don't know what they see. You can show them something like this and they're like, I don't know if that was a hand. I don't know what that was. We're not sure, right? You don't know what you see or what you don't see. But I noticed that I got a lot of comments from that. Again, these are all comments and reports because I don't, he's blocked. Um, and that's been that way for a while. Um, also funny to note that he has been blocked for quite a very long time, but yet continues to post messages like we're friends, we're comrades, we're there. He posts all old pictures of my kids. Basically, I, in my opinion, my humble opinion, he's, you know, I don't know, delusional and living some kind of a lie to put it mildly in my opinion. So I thought, wow, folks are really going to tell the public, you know, that, um, grown ass kids are brainwashed. Now we know that that can be right. I can help you with a lot of that. They could have, I don't know what Stockholm syndrome, a lot of stuff, but that's not the case with these kids. And again, most of you here know my kids, you see my kids, they grew up with you in the community. Um, even friends of mine and my exes, their dad, we're all, all of the family friends and, and relatives and everybody has stayed, you know, cordial and friendly. Um, 
one of who I adopted, Gary, my handsome football player that you just saw. Um, that was a personal adoption, meaning we know the family. Um, and um, Gary's dad actually works for Russell too and is probably underpaid and can't afford to his life too much. And so I stepped in there to help adopt and raise that child. For those of you that did not know. Um, so you guys know my kids. My kids have worked at the UN. My kids are ambassadors of the world. My kids speak multiple languages. Like I said, my youngest daughter is the youngest kid to graduate in modern his recent history from an Ivy League school. You know, I'm a little upset, so I know I'm probably rambling and leaving out parts and jumping all over the place. I'm sorry. Y'all can hang up. I love you. you. I know everybody's going to be calling me later. But you all know that for sure that my kids are not brainwashed. So I thought that was crazy that people actually started to believe that because I could see the messages in the comments. And sometimes people just want to have something to say, and I understand that too. So today, the whole topic, and I thought about people, all my friends in the industry and who I could call and what media people I could talk to about this and who do I go to talk about this? And I thought about this all the time, but I never really have, you know, the right person and it's never really come to me. So I just thought I'd turn on my thing here and say this, but for someone to imply that my kids are brainwashed uh, because they honored um, the job or the duty that their mom fulfills on a daily basis, 365 days of the year, 24 seven is crazy. No one's brainwashed. You guys can go and see, you know, no one's delusional. Uh, those of you that know me here also know um, what kind of parent I am. I have been a parent pretty much all my life. I was a very young, um, probably too young uh, bride. So I had these kids very early. And... You guys know how much my family means to me and you know how much my kids mean to me. And you guys know, all of you that know me, absolutely know what kind of um, mother I am and what kind of family dynamic I have over here. Um, I think it's very important for you all to know um, if you look back in our history, I have always been the type of co-parent. You know, we were actually very famous for our co-parenting abilities and, you know, how we always put the good face forward and the good foot forward to the world. So you guys know that. If you pay attention to the time frame um, of things, you will see that some years ago, recently, um... This ex in question uh, brought a lawsuit against me and my and my family. Um, a completely frivolous lawsuit, um, where he accused me of all kinds of crazy stuff, like um, crazy stuff, like embezzling, you know, laundering, defrauding, all these things. Again, everybody that knows me knows that nothing could be like further from the truth. Clearly, I'm sitting right here in my home, right? There's no, you know, none of that. I didn't flee the country. I don't run. I don't have to hide from anybody. I didn't commit any uh, atrocities that I need to answer for, you know, here or in the next life at the gates, wherever I'm going to get. I don't have to do that like some other people. So if you pay attention to, excuse me, I'm a little emotional. But I get like that. So do my kids. So sorry about that. But if you pay attention to when this lawsuit was launched, it's probably like a couple years ago, you'll notice that that's when all of these attacks started coming from my ex. You'll notice that that's when um, a lot of a barrage of crap started coming over here to us. Um, you'll notice that the uh, kids stopped kind of over the past years, they stopped kind of uh, seeing their dad as much. And also, again, I have five kids, so I've always been like, you know, an open book. We, all my other kids consider, let me turn to the light, consider Russell to be um, 
considered him to be at one point in time like an uncle. We were all very close. Um, and that goes for all my baby dads, by the way. There's evidence of that. You can see them, you know, on various far and few between events, but you can see them sometimes like on the red carpet and you'll see one person with all the kids, right? We get along like a family, like friends, like whatever. So you'll notice that all of this down talking and all of this stuff started to take a turn around these past couple of years, I think coinciding with that lawsuit. But I just want to come and say, you know, and I never get into this. I usually let people go and rant and rave. It's funny though, how this particular person in question, cause I could go in on a, a few of them one by one. Um, but it's funny how this particular person, if you again, go look back, You'll see on their page that they post all these pictures like we're together, like we're friends. They've even posted pictures and then said like, I just got off the phone with my kids. They sent me this great picture. None of that's true. I like receipts. So of course I have text messages. I have messages from all my kids. You know, you can go and see. I think the bottom line, like probably the breaking point for all of this was uh, over the past many months um, when their dad just sort of cut them off. Um, he was contributing a little bit of cash to their like monthly, you know, college spending, not much, a couple hundred dollars, probably maybe $500, maybe a little more. Again, all these things can be, you know, proven with receipts. I, li I love receipts. So folks can always go and get receipts and show over the years. Um, um, and so one day he just kind of cut the kids off. There was no more money coming in, no more like allowance, quote unquote allowance. I think he probably did that just to double up the expenses on me, which is no problem. I stepped up. I did it. But when he did this, it was around um, just before finals and graduation. It was some months ago, just before finals and graduation. And he did it without telling the kids or talking to the kids or anything. He did it. It's funny. After he did an interview with... Um, I heard some clips from an interview with uh, this young man. I don't know, but I see him a lot. I think his name is Academic or DJ Academic. Oh, happy Juneteenth, you guys. We're doing all this on Juneteenth. Come on, let it go. Let it out. Um, so I saw in that clip, that was some months ago too. You can go and reference it and find it where he told this guy, he was on and on about this guy. And I think it was about old school hip hop heads and how you should honor them, which I believe you should. Um, but he was saying to the guy, like, I'm so rich. I got this and I got that and I'm this and that. None of that could be further from the truth. You know, he has turned around. And then again, I have records and evidence of this where he's told the kids in writing. We have it, text messages. I'm broke. I this, I that. I can't, you know, go get it from your mom. Now, meanwhile, I have been financially carrying this person probably for the last at least 10 years. Myself and my ex-husband. Again, this is all proven with receipts. So if whatever somebody doesn't like what I'm saying, you know, we can talk about it. We can come, we can open up our receipts. I, I love it. I love receipts. Um, but I've taken care of this person to the tune of many, many, many millions of dollars to help with their bills, their overhead, their companies that they run into the ground, their unsuccessful bids, all of their stuff. Um, I don't necessarily speak for my kids, but I think I could take probably a good shot at it. They're sleeping right now because it's not even 8.30 in the morning. But my two oldest girls, they're young women. They're young women of the world. Um, I think that was a very, that was very tough for them that their dad like kind of cut them off and cut off conversation and cut off try helping them. And he's even said things to them like, why did you go to college? You shouldn't have gone to college. You wasted that money. You could have saved it. While I'm up here trying to hustle the kids over the finish line, you know, it, uh, that was crazy. It's just been so many things that kind of negate what I'm trying to do over here in my house. Again, like I live in Beverly Hills, California. You know, I go between New York and LA. People know how to find me. They know how to see me. I see people walking up and down the street all day, every day. Um, I'm just not going to tolerate this from someone who's not on the streets walking around every day. Um, they are like, I don't know, apparently like hiding under a rock someplace far away in another country. You know, again, these girls are adults. They are young adults. Um, I typically try to be very friendly and amicable with all my baby daddies, whatever. 
But I think it comes a time when you guys have to ask yourself, why are these women, young women, um, not supportive or not really trying to hear that? Or what have they gone through? What have they seen that they, you know, that has turned them off or that has put a, a bad taste in their mouth? You know, we've seen a lot lately over the years. And I have literally stood by these people and this man all my life. Um, and I just get so emotional when someone tries to attack my parenting or my family or my kids that have tried so hard. You know, you can see all the press that we've done, all the interviews that we've done. I mean, it's a community thing. These kids graduating from high school, I mean, college high school too. And all my friends, you know, I say the same thing. It's every person knows here that has had graduates. I graduated from college only just recently in the past, like five years. It's tough. You know, they're teenagers developing into young adults. Now they have lived their whole life in the public eye, which I guess is a good thing and a bad thing because it's good because you know, my kids, you know, my family, you know, and so I hope that uh, the public can kind of decipher some of these things and some of this, you know, bullshit. But it's also bad because you grow up and again, your stuff is in the public eye. You don't get to like, you don't get to handle things that privately and discreetly like other people may have a chance that are not in the public eye. So I am very touched and emotional. I become very emotional. People always say, Kamora, you're such a boss. You're such a leader, but you're so emotional. I am. I am emotional. I will, you know, like snap in a heartbeat when it comes to my kids. I think everybody knows that. And so the fact that you would come at this point and... Um, The fact that you would come at this point and try to attack my kids or my family is crazy. Um, I'm very, very proud of my kids. Um, I love them very much. Um, And I'm just not, I'm not going to tolerate this. I'm tired of it. I literally woke up to this. I haven't had a chance to like get on the phone and call people and get the whole thing going and call publicists, and call friends and do all that. I've gotten, you know, enough. Um, I just came on here and did it like this. I'm sorry. I'm in my living room. Those are all my <laughs> crazy clothes I'm, re- I'm renovating my closet and so I my clothes are here behind me and so it looks like I'm in a warehouse but I'm really in my living room so um I think if you look at just some of the facts this person was not present at graduation again there was not one graduation there were several graduation events both for NYU and Harvard you can look these things up there's a schedule there you know public events you can anybody can come or get tickets or show up or be there they're usually in auditoriums NYU was at Yankee Stadium um one of the graduations the other ones were at um smaller venues and locations one of ours was at the Beacon Theater they're all over the same in Har- for Harvard and Boston you know there's many different groups that graduate so Lo- Yoki's like a, cl- a classics major it might be the classics group or the division of um, arts and science or you know, the law group, the this group, the that group, everybody has a graduation in addition to the school as a whole, right? So my point of saying all this is that, um, is that, hi, Renbex, hi, you guys. The point of saying all this is that if you look, this person has not been to any events, did not come to graduation, you know, no, no, he wasn't particularly wanted, but no one stopped you, you know, hasn't sent a flower or a, or a gift or a, a kind word, 
you know, cut the kids off when they were traveling around. The, Yoki was on a trip to Greece with the classics department. She didn't know that her little debit card or whatever wasn't working. That was a whole mess. And it's a lot. Again, you parents will know when you have kids that are in the middle of finals and studies and stuff like that. And, and stuff comes up and their things aren't going through and they're, you know, whatever. It was a, it's been a stressful past months getting through college and it's been a stressful past just couple of years dealing with this um um just dealing with this craziness hold on i'm just trying to see what you guys are saying and i can't um so i just want to say i usually stay here and i try to be very supportive of my family i've tried to be very supportive all the time of uh even my baby daddies i've sat quietly through things and you know just because I'm a mom I've tried to you know look the other way for things and turn the other cheek and I don't know I sometimes feel like um some of those things come back to haunt you over time um and stuff like that so, you know, I, I'm not really sure, but I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot. Again, like I'm sitting here with my kids in my house. Easy to find me, not running, not hiding, not, you know, not doing any of that. And so to have these constant um, attacks is just kind of crazy. Like, I don't know. And I know you're probably looking at me now, fool, watching this, I'm sure. Like, I, I'm not your friend. We're not friends. Like, the stuff that you've done to our family is just too much. Like, please just sh- sh- go in peace. Go and serve the Lord, whatever whatever Lord you serve. You know, that's funny because on the one hand, you have all this yogi preaching, this yogi karmic love. You know, I feel like that's an act. And then the the real side, the real things come out and you're like, super you know vindictive and mean and lying 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 again you can go back right now you want to see a couple of lies you can go on their page you can look at all their pictures that they say things like we were just together we just talked they post pictures of my kids from years ago making you think that they're right there right down the street right now going through all this stuff you know you can look you can gauge the date you can see the comments you can see they're blocked we don't talk to them these are all lies you tell the one guy doing this interview you're so rich you're this and that But yet in reality, I think you're probably pretty broke. And again, you know, all of this stuff is like, my picture frame broke. All of this stuff is like, um, look, okay, it broke (laughs) again. All of this stuff is like, you know, documented and, um, and you guys can just see where we're where we're coming from, where I'm coming from. I'm a good person. I'm I'm very transparent in the fact that, in the sense that, you know, again, people know me. You guys know me. I, some of you have never met me. You've grown up with me. You've seen my shows. You see my work. You wear my clothes. Um, others of you know me very well. You know me personally. You know my kids. You know my exes. You know the dads. A lot of people here um, know both of us. You know, and they know he's wrong. All the friends have said, this is wrong. This is crazy. We don't understand it. But they still support him. I feel like it's one of those things where he's just like a big, bigger than life kind of, you know, uh, powerhouse. And so he just kind of turns and manipulates the press and people and to believe, you know, anything like you, like gaslighting, you know, like that didn't happen. I didn't do that to you. Uh, I didn't do those things to you. I didn't, you know, you're imagining things. How many countless women have said this, have been told this, I should say, or would say this to you? Myself and my two girls who are adults included, you know, you guys didn't just start to see my kids. We didn't just go through a divorce. We went through this divorce, I don't know, 20 years ago. 20 some odd years ago. So this is not a situation. Again, you can get receipts. You can go see where they say like, oh, kids been brainwashed. But we've been fine up until these past several years. So, you know, what happened? All of a sudden now the kids are brainwashed. All of a sudden now these young women who are grown women are babies. You know, you they, they have their own relationship with you. You have their, your own not existent relationship with them. 
I'm just asking that you please leave us alone. You know, I've tried to go to lawyers and get help. I've tried to show all the crazy texts I've had to block. Like, you do crazy shit. Like, send pic- pic- f- flowers to yourself and take a picture and send post it on the gram and tell everybody I sent you flowers. Again, I have receipts of all of this. I have receipts from your office saying that you sent flowers to yourself without my permission. I have all of this. You guys have never seen it because it just doesn't wore it you know it doesn't rise to that occasion i mind my own business but please don't attack my children they've been through so much um don't attack my my family which is supposed to be your family too don't do that because you're you know you're at rock bottom you i don't know hypothetically you're at rock bottom you've hit the bottom i don't know you're grasping at straws i don't know if this is a money grab i don't really know what this is i think it's probably all of the above i have to say i think and allegedly and all these things just so i can be you know right in saying like my feelings and how i feel what i think um but i ha- i met this person when i was um in high school in St. Louis, Missouri, I was modeling. I was 16 years old. Like I've known you and everybody knows again, that's documented. You can see, um, I believe I was maybe a sophomore. I know it was before junior prom and senior prom. Cause I went to both of those proms alone with my friends when I was dating them. So it was definitely long before junior and senior prom. I think it was around sophomore year of high school. And again, everybody knows this in my life. You know, they know they I was walking around, they see me. The point of it is I've known you a long time and I've seen lots of stuff and I just choose to not go there. Um, lots of things that I could say over the time. You know, I'm typically the one that he and others would call to have their back, right? I'm the I'm the one that they would call to um, solidify everything, to validate everything. If you always look, whenever they get into trouble, they always want to hop up on the live and do a half screen with me. Again, this was years ago because we don't speak now. But, you know, I'm always the one that kind of puts out the fire. I'm also the one that always runs to the defense of all my friends. So if you see uh, any other women, certainly women that I've come up with, certainly women that are, are mothers of my child, other of my kids that I love, I come to their defense. So if they're down and out or something's wrong, yeah, you're always going to see Kimora, big mouth me, running up to the gate, running up to help. And you know why? It's because I feel like I'm the one that can't be bowled over. Some of these other people can be bowled over. A lot of my women... You know, friends and other moms, they've gone through things. I've lost friends of mine. People have passed on. You know, I've been through a lot. And I've seen where women, a lot of times, just don't get their just due. They don't get support. They don't have anything to show for their life and their contributions because they depended on a man. I am not that. I'm one of the one, the few. I'm one of the few and there's a handful you can count us in your hands. I'm one of the few that doesn't have to do that. Uh, I'm one of the few that has my own uh, stuff. And because of that, um, I feel like I'm the one that can speak up. I'm the one. I don't. My stuff does not depend on, you know, my paycheck doesn't depend on these buffoons, you know. Whereas some of my other friends, they, they, maybe they're, they do, their life does depend on that. So they can't always speak up. So that's another just side note as to why you see me running. Anytime there's an issue, I'm going to run because I'm the one that you can't knock down. I'm the one that you're not just going to like ignore and step over me. Um, and so that's just a little side note as to why you will always see me fighting or taking up women's causes. You guys know that I work with Skid Row. I work with unhoused homeless children you know women and children infants you know this this is my life's work i have you know adopted my my third son i mean i i'm a i'm a 
global citizen of the world. I'm a woman of the world. I'm a business you know, woman. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm just um, tired of it. I just, please leave us alone. Like, stop with all these lies. Um, and I see a lot of comments. And, you know, thank you guys. Um, um, but... Yeah, I think that's it. I think I think I'm just I'm saying, please, um, like leave us alone. We don't. We tried to help you. You know, we somewhere there's there's love for you. Please try to raise above and just leave us alone. Like I have done everything I could to raise my kids. Um, I've done everything I could, oftentimes alone. Um, I've been like scammed up one side of the street and down the next, and I'm still standing. I'm still okay. That's not, you know, those things can, the same cannot be said for other people. Um, I'm from St. Louis. I see people on here from St. Louis. And they're saying like we're strong and we're not gonna take that. Yeah, you know I'm from I'm from St. Louis. I'm not gonna take this. Um, and one of my baby daddies, the one in question, is from Queens, and so I never thought either that Queens would come through like that. That is not representing Queens. You know what I'm saying? You are not official. You are not thorough. You do not stand up and support your family. You scream and stand there on the side and throw tantrums and you are a spoiled brat. When something doesn't go your way, it just gets worse. You know how they say like the the squeaky wheel gets the grease? They're the squeaky wheel. And I'm not the squeaky wheel, but I think um I get the I get, you know, my just do from God, my God that I serve, I'm blessed. I don't miss a beat. That kind of tells me every day that karmically I'm I'm going down the right, you know, path. I'm always rewarded. My kids are good. Um And so I think that's just a little bit of like juxtaposition there, but also just to guys um you know, it's kind of a tired narrative that you always want to blame the mothers of these of these kids, especially, like I say, when they're adults. You want to blame, you know, the moms and say that you didn't see your kids and they wouldn't let you in. But again, these are adults. They have telephones. They have emails. You can go see them. They have jobs. They have, um, you know, uh, nothing is preventing someone from being a... Um, a good person or a good parent, but that person themselves, that's a relationship that you need to take up with the, the Lord. You need to take that up with your God and with your kids, but don't attack them when they don't uh, support this lying narrative. Don't attack them when they don't, things don't go right. And it doesn't, um, and it doesn't, um, and it doesn't prove you to be Gary. I seen you sign on. Is this Gary the little one or Gary the big one? That's Gary the big little one. Gary, hang up the phone. You're not supposed to be on here. You're supposed to be at camp. This is grown folks business. Grown folks business, Vashon. Get your butt to football. So, um, dang, and now Kenzel's on here too. Y'all back out. Y'all back out. How do I exit folks off of the thing? Kenzo and Gary, take your butts to where you need to go, sirs, 13 and 14 year old gentlemen. Um, but what that's just that's all I wanted to say. I feel like this is just such a long uh emotional rant, but thank you guys for you know hearing me out. I'm just kind of tired of it. We don't we don't engage with you, we don't consider you, we you know do our best to survive and stay upright regardless of of you you know regardless of folks who are not supportive we still do you know just fine um 
but don't punish children for expressing their emotions. Don't, um, let's see. Let me see what this is saying. Hold on. It's going so fast. I can't read all this, but I love you guys. It's so much. It's like jumping, jumping, jumping. And I'm trying and I'm trying to address the things that you guys are saying. But the point of it is just don't attack the kids and don't attack the moms. And even though these are, um, oh my God. Get your ass off this goddamn. What are you doing? Goodbye. No, I'm not done. Oh, you're done. <laughs> you're fucking done. Look who's here. Don't let, don't let. <laughs> Look who's here! <laughs> Get your okay, ass off this. So line. this is who woke me up this morning, my Get friend, off, my beloved. Get off. Line. And I saw her posting comments, and folks were like, "Oh, I guess you know her." And I said, "Yeah, I guess she does. She is. She's here every day, every other day. Here she is, right here. She just drove up. We might as well go do some things now. Which you, I, you know, I brought the shit. <laughs> when this come out, <laughs> when this come out, it's Ooh. a lot in here." It's a lot in here. We won't tell you what all that is. It smells good, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, again, this is my girl, my best girlfriend, Hachu. She's a um, hair person extraordinaire to everybody, everybody. But, again, she's a single mom. Her baby, our baby, is how old is our baby? 20, 20, 23. 23, the same age as in Ming's. December. So, again, like, I just think um, don't attack the moms. Don't attack the kids for saying what they feel. Um, my kids have been through so much and they have accomplished so much. We're so proud of them. They're young business women. They're making it in a time where it's very tough for anybody. You know, don't come down on them for how they feel. And oftentimes the reason that you don't see a lot of us or them on this topic is because they're afraid to say stuff. They're afraid. They don't want to speak up. They don't want to rock the boat. You know, women are... Um, afraid sometimes afraid to speak up afraid of what's going to happen afraid of how their class is going to view them or their job is going to view them or whatever their friends or their peers and I'm just not going to have that we're not going to do that to Ming or Ayoki or Kenzo Gary Wolf um, we're just not so let me see um, what else I love you guys too. Thank you so much for listening to me on a Monday morning. And the point of all of this is I hope to not, I did not bring you down too much. I want to uplift you guys. Um, and I want you all to know that you can make it. You can be a single mom. You can be a victim of abuse and all kinds of things. Um, we support you. We support one another. You can make it out. I'm here to tell you that you can hold your head high and proud don't let things that have happened to you become you. You know how they say you don't have to look like what you've been through. You don't have to become what you've been through. So I think just stay strong. Um, I think that's it. She said that I'm done. But, you know, have a good week. Have a good Monday. Please just... Um, I know I'm an incredible mom. Um, and I know so many of you are too. I know I'm an incredible auntie. I'm an incredible lots of things. And yeah, a lot of times I have had to fill that role of uh, a, a father. Um, that's not to say that I'm a man. I'm not to say that I'm a father, but I've definitely filled that, fulfilled that role and fulfilled these things. Thank you. Um, and so to all the people who just step up and handle their stuff, you know, I applaud you and I love you. I'm here for you. Um, you guys could go look. I wrote a book many, many years ago. It's called Fabulosity. You remember that? Right. But if you go look in that book, I was saying the same stuff now that I'm saying now then um, about how you just don't let a guy define you and uh, things that they give you does not, you know, make you um, and things that you've seen when they're not right. You don't have to stick around. Um, you may not always have the voice to speak up and speak out all the time or at that time or at any particular time, but you're strong. Um, 
And we're a community, we're a tribe, we support one another, I support you. Um, so I think that's it. Mm-hmm. So that's it. I'm just tired of the mind games. I'm tired of all the manipulation. I'm tired of the lies. You should be saying thank you. Usually you do say thank you to me. Usually you have said that. Like, let's ask the world where this turned. Usually I'm the best mom. Usually you're preaching all these things. That's what I'm saying. One time it's a yogi preaching all the goodness. And then it turns into like vindictive lying. And that's very much um, two-faced. And that is, you know, being a hypocrite. And when things don't go your way, you kind of just start to attack people. So, yeah, no, you should say thank you. Um, Thank you that I adopted Gary Jr. Thank you that I've raised all these kids. Thank you that I've never spoken out about you and the things that you've done and the way that you are. You should thank me. Um, Thank me that I've helped you support your business every single person that works in your company i can name them by name i have paid for them on payroll every person that's in your house right now for years and i have receipts to the tunes of millions you should say thank you like just kind of stop with the whole narrative that the parent who's remaining standing is bad or that the parent who got the kids through the fire through the thick and the thin is wrong Or that the kids who are old enough, adults, to speak up for themselves are brainwashed. Or that you, you know, you told the world, ask the mother why it had to be that way. You sent that, ask the mother, so the mother is responding. Um, yeah, I'm tired of it. Please just leave us alone. We don't, we don't talk to you. We don't deal with you. We don't see you. We're not even in close proximity to you. You know, you have fled away. We don't deal with you. Huh? Literally worlds away. Worlds away. Worlds away. You know, whenever you come around, it's... And by come around, I even mean come to this country. You know, it's, it's it's a... I guess you're in and out. We don't really see you. You're not really in our lives. So just please, like, leave it that way. I don't want to have to do any more of this. I don't want to have to, um... Yeah, it's I've seen. Beneath the fab life. I've seen. Yeah, what? It's beneath the fab. It's life. beneath the fab life. We're not doing that. And I just, you know, I support so many women. Let me say that because I don't think I've ever really said that. Um, I support women who are telling their story. Um, because I understand what you've gone through. I've seen. Um, I've been there. Um. You know, like they say, Andrea is saying, like, what goes on behind closed doors? I've seen some of what goes on behind closed doors, and I don't like it. I don't choose to be a part of it. That's why you can always see, where is Kimora? She's apart from the BS. Where's Kimora's kids? They're apart from the BS. Um, um, so I think that's that's all. I probably said that a thousand times, right? Oh, and Ayoki, you on here too? Get your butt back to modeling. Why are all the kids on here? Don't make me click you on here, Yoki. You better hang up. No, I'm not going to click you on. The kids are adults. Um, but my little ones are not, and so I don't want them to necessarily be in this. But then again, whenever the dad or whatever does something on the other side, they see that. That's in the press. And then the moms are kind of hustling backwards. And I think all of this is like narcissistic behavior. It's bullying behavior. It's behavior that you'll actually see from a lot of guys in the industry, from a lot of friends of, they all stick together. A lot of their peers, a lot of my friends have been kind of oppressed and pushed back and silenced and teased, you know, made fun of. They get into new relationships and the person starts to dog the other person. I'm talking publicly, you guys. We've gone through so much, but we don't do that to your Many women or, 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 I, <laughs> no, we don't, <laughs> we don't do that to your people. Okay. Whatever you choose to do, um, that's your business, but that's, I feel like I've cleansed myself. Thank you for letting me shed those tears. Um, 
Let me see what you guys are saying. I love you. I love you too. Thank you so much. And for people who have just joined now, I mean, I guess you'll catch up later. I'll leave this. I'm going to save this. <laughs> I'm going to save this one if I know how when I hang up. Um, but the bottom line is stop popping your shit over here on this side of the fence mm -hmm. to the moms that are doing whatever they're doing to hold it down. And I've done everything to hold it down for my five kids. Mm -hmm. I said three, but I'm holding five kids. Okay. So yeah, don't come for us. Mm hmm. Um, and it's all good when we're friendly, but then when things start to kind of break apart, you know, you start with the whole intimidation tactics, the belittling tactics, the lies, you know, it's too much. It's kind of played and coming from a bold faced liar, like who even is going to believe that there's plenty of other women where I've come from. There's plenty of other people where I've come from. There's plenty of other, plenty, plenty. I have an army behind me. You are an army too. I know that that's why we've been suffering through all this time but i do think in this case right now the truth will prevail and the righteous will prevail and i'm really saying that you know like step ye off satan satan step off go over there with your stuff keep over you? there under your rock she's in new york up on my thing only ming is here i just saw her walking up the oh ming just left ming's over it so um yeah Happy Father's Day. Happy Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. um, happy Mother's Day. I see so many women on here that I know you're single moms. And I see a lot of guys on here that I know, you know, you guys are single dads. I see a lot of people on here that I know make it work in spite of the odds. That I know make it work when, you know, in spite of being abandoned, pushed to the side, dropped off. You know, I see men... A lot, a lot, a lot of times that spend like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on women, random women and their kids and not even bother to talk to their own kids or even to send a, a birthday card or a birthday present or a, a, a gift card for a birthday meal, you know, a hundred dollar meal at Applebee's. I don't know. Nothing. But you, but they do so much for these, you know, random whatever people random men and women so you know that's it go in peace go with god via con dios thank you guys for listening to me i see like philadelphia i see st louis i see kansas city i see europe in here and texas and um just so much everybody's on here now saying what's going on you guys gotta enlighten the crew from the past um I see queens in here. So that's it. All you moms and dads and the people who are really holding it down for their families and aunts and uncles and cousins and grandmas and grandpas, everybody. Um, God bless you and kudos. I really take off my hat to you. Um, but I also take my hat off to myself and I'm not going to, I'm not, this is where it just kind of stops. Okay, I could be a lot of things. I'll be that. It's fine. Think of all those names and whatever you want to do. But don't attack my... Um, don't attack my kids. Don't have anything to say about what goes on in this house. Because if you want to, then we can all just do that. And like I said, we, I like receipts. I have receipts. I've been collecting them. I've been baking a cake. So if you want it, just let me know. Hit me up. And let me know that you want it. I got more. But please leave us alone. I beg. Sometimes I'm a little feisty. The yoga kind of escapes me, you know, and I'd be wanting to like, Mah! but I'm back to being a yogi right now. But you are living a, a life of sin and mess and crime and mess. That's the crazy part. So fix yourself. Don't throw stones when you live in a glass house. Okay. Make yourself right with your creator. And I see a lot of women on here that are saying, oh, this resonates so much. And I've had, oh, and here's Yoki on here right now. I see. Oh, my God. How do I erase that? How do I erase that? Yoki said, I have. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, let me screenshot this. Hold on. No, hold on. Here, Ioki Lee Simmons. Ioki says, I have phone tapes of him threatening me. Now, y'all know. 
Why would Miss Harvard have to do that? Miss Harvard, you don't have to do that. I love you, baby. Mama has your back all the time. But you don't have to do that. And I know you're always worried, you okay, what people are going to think of you if you say this, if you say that, or if something comes out. Baby, they already know. They known your people's long before you did, baby. You just got here. You 20. Enjoy. They 70. They are damn near 70 years old. Okay? Leave us the fook alone. That's all that we ask. Stop threatening my kids. Stop harassing us. Stop lying. Stop posting these things on your story like we're friends. Stop posting this lying narrative. Stop telling the world you're so rich when we know you not. Circumstances and things have taken a toll. Lawsuits and accusations have taken a toll. Tell the truth, okay? If you want to be a yogi, like really live that in your heart. I used to always, always say from when I was young, if you were a fraction of the dad or a fraction of the person that the world thinks you are, things would be so different at home. And you know, maybe I am just a powerful, stronger woman, stronger, independent spirit. Cause people always say, well, it's not just one baby daddy, right? It's like two or three. I have three. Um, and on any, any given day, it could be one or two that I'm not really messing with. You never know, but no, I'm sorry. It could be five. It's not a reflection of me because I do my stuff. I hold my stuff down and everybody knows that. And that is evident in the fact that I am with my kids in and out day and night of their life. Come here, baby. Hi. Hi. But, but Wolfie, he was, he was choking me. <laughs> Wolfie was choking you? He was, he was putting his hands on me. He was putting his hands on you. Wolfie. Say hi, this is my other baby. Say hi. hi. Say hi to the people. Look, it's a video. Hi, video. Hi, video. Are you my baby? <laughs> no? Yeah. Sometimes. Mm -mm. Who's your mom? Do we share? Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. share. She's trying to take my baby. It's Hotch's baby, but she's my baby too. Are you my baby too? Yeah. Sit up here. Stop trying to slide down. Mm -hmm. She's one of mine. Hotch is trying to take. Tell Wolfie mm -hmm. I said to keep his hands to himself. Okay. Wolfie! He's yeah. upstairs. Go get him. She's three. Okay, the, 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 the girls will tell. He put his hands on me. He put him hands on me. That's um, Brielle. So, that's it, everybody. I love you. Stay strong. I don't want to overly ramble. I've already done that. Um, if you have any more questions, call me. You know how to find me. Um, the exotic chick, the exotic hottie, the exotic chochi. Hey, Poodle Oh, <laughs> they said hi. Brett, 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 Brett. All right, so I think that's it. We did that. Someone is saying, oh, they got Lisa Hilton in here. They're saying, take notes, sis. Oh, she takes notes. She gives notes, too. She, she is a notebook. She is. A, we are notebooks. Okay. Baby. Yes. We'll be up. Come here. She's upstairs. What did he do now? She tell was, us. She was she was just racing with me. Then he told me, but I can tell him to eat his food. You can tell him to eat his food, okay? Okay. Tell him you're not older, but you're wiser, and he's gonna listen. Tell him, mommy said, auntie said, eat his food. Uh, I mean, she's not here. Go upstairs and find him and tell him I said. But I can't. Okay, well stay here with us then. You want to come back on the screen? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just want to stand there? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so who is this? Hold on. Brooklyn Bevy. Children need their dads. True. They do. But don't tell me that. Tell the dads that. The mothers or the single parents who are left behind, mm -hmm. you know, left in the family unit, left to take care of the kids, we're not the ones alienating. Yeah, we do need the dads. The dads was always around up until some point. So you ask yourself what happened there. Because this is not this is not a house where we typically don't mess with dads. We're always like in real good. You could go back and look at pictures of our vacations. That's my boat I had him on. You could go back and see pictures of all kinds of destinations. Those are my houses that I had him in. Those are my things that I invited him to come in and co-parent with myself and my children and his children and my husband. Okay, I've shared my ex. I've opened up my life. Um, so children do need fathers. Children do need mothers. Ch it takes a village. I will say that. But they don't need someone who is narcissistic, emotionally not supportive, um, abusive, physical, mental, emotional, financial. 
That's what we're talking about right now. Financial abuse you tried to inflict upon my kids. You tried by, you know, withholding this some little $300 or $500 or even maybe more allowance. That don't work. Okay, I have my kids back until the end of earth, whatever I got to do, wait tables, sweep the the snow, the plow, the snow, whatever I got to do, I'm doing that. Okay, for me, it happens to be lifestyle and fashion and things like that that I choose to stick to. But I always have my kids. We're good. Um, And that's it. I just saw your ET interview. That was a good one, right? ET is good to us. And the kids were there and they got... You know, it was a great time. That's the whole point. I wish I could come on here and say that to you guys. It's been a great time. We've gone through graduation. I'm so, 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 so proud of my kids. I really did do this pretty much single-handedly. I'm going to tell you that on this Juneteenth. Not that I don't, I don't mind to share the stage, but I mind to be tormented. So I'm very proud of my girls. Don't you worry about this, you guys. Maybe we should be <clears throat> uh, writing another book. Tina! Tina's on here. Tina, I love you. And um, yes, the women in Korea are beautiful and everywhere all over Asia. And can you please send us an itinerary for Tokyo? The kids have been asking. That's the kids, Auntie Tina. We need all the stops in Tokyo. (laughs) I love you. And thank you for my lip balm and all the colors, my lip glossies and all the colors. We only got two. And Minky came and took hers and whatever. That's another whole day. So that's my girlfriend, um, another um, single mom entrepreneur i'm not going to tell all her business up in here but i just will say that us women defy you know the odds we when the man comes home and he's been what sleeping with the secretary (laughs) while all the times that i was loving you you were busy we have that we have that we've seen a lot and we still persevere and then people want to come in and attack the parents we're not going to do that um they say you got them cracking up they love you Tell your friend that we loves her. I like that top hot shoe. Okay, so what else? Single lady notes. Hi, you know you've helped me through some some things. You have some pearls of wisdom there. Um, that's it. 90s Kimura Lee. Hi, you guys. Um, but it takes a nation. And I know here that these few thousand people on this feed are my tribe. Um, and again, you guys know me. You know my family. You know all the See, members that we're we talking on about. That damn shade room. Hang up. Oh, we're on the what? It, we're still here and we're right here. It's live? No. Oh, no. wait, let me see. My eyes are swollen. This is why we're hanging up. Let me see. No, Bye. Mm. How are you for that, man? Yeah, that's true. Wait, don't hang up. You- oh, yeah, it sends himself flowers. But lies and says they're from her. Yeah, that's true. I have pictures. I can send it in. Who is that? That's neighborhood talk. Shade room, whoever you are. Yeah, I have the pictures. I have the <laughs> I have the messages from the staff that says, I'm so sorry. We Should we send flowers from you? And I said, absolutely not. I don't mess with them. They sent them anyway and apologized to me. I have a message saying, we're so sorry that we did that. And then you went into your little birthday celebration and you showed everybody that me and the girls sent you flowers. You wrote the cards and everything your office did like it came from us. Yeah, I have receipts. I also have receipts. Yoki has receipts. Ming has receipts. Yeah, the mother is responding. We're tired. All right. You can think what you want to think. For those of you that don't support me and don't love me, that's fine. You don't pay my bills. Mm -hmm. Help them over there pay his. 